What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Odell, and today we're going to be going over a game by Hakaru Nakamura, an American star who has consistently been one of the top players in the world for quite some time now. In this game, he plays against Israeli Grandmaster Boris Gelfand, who has quite a resume himself. So obviously this is an elite level game, and I was amazed at the level of intuition and creativity Nakamura played with. And in addition, his 24th move is so unique, I'm not sure if I've seen anything quite like it to this day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Nakamura was playing with the black pieces, so let's just hop right in. We see d4, knight f6, c4, g6. Here Nakamura going for the king's Indian defense. We see knight c3, bishop g7, e4. Here Galfand is pushing and making space in the center of the board. We see d6, knight f3. This is all very standard. Castles. Both sides just developing their pieces. Bishop e2. And here e5. Now here Galfand played castles, which is the best move. Some of you might be wondering, wait, why can't white just take this pawn on e5? Well, the problem is after d takes e5 and d takes e5, and knight takes e5, snatching up a pawn, here Nakamura could play queen takes d1 check, and after bishop takes d1, knight takes e4. The idea here is that after knight takes e4, Nakamura could play bishop takes e5, and here we're at even material, and I would give the advantage to black. So after e5, Galfand was wise to just play castles. And here we see knight c6, and after d5, knight e7. We see knight d2, and here Nakamura plays knight e8. Now at first, this knight to e8 might seem like a passive move. But really what Nakamura is trying to do is allow this pawn to come to f5, and eventually push it to f4. We see b4. And Nakamura wastes no time playing f5. And here in this position, what we see is basically a race. Gelfand is going to push on the queen side of the board, trying to create a space advantage. And on the other hand, Nakamura is going to aggressively go after this king on g1. So the game continues with c5, knight f6, f3, solidifying this pawn on e4. Here Nakamura continues to push with f4. Here knight c4. This is a nice move from Gelfand, putting some pressure on g6. We see g5, a4, knight g6. Notice how both sides don't seem too concerned about what the other is doing. Both are just continuing to aggressively attack. Here we see bishop a3. And here this bishop on a3 has its eye on the rook on f8. So Nakamura plays rook f7, getting out of the line of fire. And here Gelfand continues to push with b5. Now here white's actually threatening to take this pawn on d6. So here Nakamura takes on c5. And after bishop takes c5, h5, continuing to push. We see a5, g4. And here after b6, I think most players in this in this position would probably play something like a takes b6 or c takes b6 or try to slow down the attack on the queen side but nakamura doesn't seem too concerned he just continues with g3 now here galfine plays king h1 the idea here is that he wants to open up this g1 square for the bishop so that it can help defend the king on h1 and here in this position which is a better piece the bishop on g7 or the bishop on c5 I think it's pretty easy to tell that this bishop on c5 is a much stronger piece as it's very active. So here Nakamura plays bishop f8, trying to trade off. And here d6 was played, which I think is a slight mistake. I think better in this position was bishop takes f8. Idea being after rook takes f8, here Galfine could have played b takes e7. And we see after queen takes e7 and a move like queen d2, white has a very strong pass pawn on d5, and can continue with knight b5, bringing the rook to b1. I think this is a very comfortable and a very good position for white. But instead, after bishop f8, we see d6, and after a takes b6, bishop g1, coming back to the defense of the king. Here Nakamura continues with knight h4, and here we see rook e1. I think here Galfin's idea is to bring this bishop back to f1. But I think slightly better, instead of rook e1, was to play h takes g3. 
because we see after f takes g3, black's attack has been diffused a little bit. We see after bishop e3, I think white's doing just fine here. But we see after knight h4 and rook e1, again, as I said, white wants to play bishop f1. But Nakamura doesn't give Gelfand time to do this. He plays a somewhat crazy looking move. Knight takes g2. And here Gelfand played d takes c7, which is actually a mistake. I think better in this position was to play king takes g2. But even after king takes g2, here Nakamura could have played rook g7. And we see that this rook on g7 is very active. This queen's coming in to the game. This bishop's coming into the game. It's not very hard to see why Galfan wasn't too excited about playing king takes g2. But we see after knight takes g2 and d takes e7, here Nakamura finds a very nice move. Knight takes e1. Now, the idea here is that, true, white could play c takes e8 and make a queen here. But here g2 would be checkmate and the game would be over. So here after knight takes e1, white couldn't take the queen on d8 because of g2. So Gelfand continues with queen takes e1. And here Nakamura plays g2 check, forcing the king to take on g2. And now rook g7 check. Now, king f1 can't be played here because of a simple mating pattern. We have bishop h3 check, king f2, queen d4 check, and here after knight e3 and queen takes e3, the game's over, right? So after rook g7 check, Galfan played king h1, and here bishop h3. Now again, notice how white can make a queen here by taking the queen on d8. However, Nakamura is threatening checkmate again. So here Galfan plays bishop f1, defending the g2 square, and Nakamura finds another brilliant move, queen d3. The idea here is that if bishop takes d3, we have bishop g2, and that's checkmate. And if bishop takes h3, we have queen takes f3 check, and after bishop g2, queen takes g2 would be checkmate. So after queen d3, we see knight takes e5, which attacks the queen on d3, and also protects the pawn on f3. And here Nakamura plays bishop takes f1, another brilliant move, allowing white to take the black queen a fourth time. This is the fourth time that Nakamura has offered his queen to Gelfand. But again, the problem is after knight takes d3, bishop g2, and the game's over. So after knight takes e5, and bishop takes f1, we see queen takes f1, and here Nakamura just continues with queen takes c3, and after rook c1, queen takes e5. We see c8 equals queen, and we have rook takes c8, and rook takes c8, and queen e6, and here Galfan resigned. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game. As we saw, Nakamura is a very dynamic and very creative chess player. Let me know what you guys thought of this game down in the comment section, and let me know what other chess-related videos you would like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch another one, you can click or tap up here. And I've got a lot more high quality chess content on the way. So if you'd like to subscribe, you can click or tap down here. I really appreciate your support.